And this is where we bring in Mr. John, the man in the black Stetson, to keep us up to date on all the latest UFO news as John comes on in here. And we're going to kick things off right off the bat with more Luis Elizondo and the control of information on UFOs. This isn't sitting well with the UFO crowd out there. You know, and, and I got to be honest. Well, I mean, first off, thank you. It's great to be here. But, uh, you know, I got to be honest. I, I've, I've, been a, I've been an Elizondo fan for a long time. I mean, obviously, I have a bias. I've worked a lot with the community that he's from and, and with other branches. And I come from a family with deep Navy roots. So, you know, I certainly have some biases there. And I, but I've always, like, I've always had a good feeling about Lou. And I got to admit, even this isn't sitting terribly well with me. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, well, let me let me exp explain a little more about it first. The, the the challenge is is that a lot of people have suspected that there has been a narrative, or that there has been some sort of a of a control mechanism in the release of information that somehow the release of information timed and have been organically released, and a lot of us have tried to you know. Uh, you know stave off those 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 suspicions because we wanted to you know we wanted to think well of, of everyone involved but essentially in this interview that he did on friday um, and i'll provide a link to it with a timestamp. um you know he talked about the fact that you know there you know he was asked why has there been this gap in news and what he talked about was that it was not it was not accidental at all I um, mean, it wasn't that someone came down and clamped down it wasn't that someone got in trouble it was that he and some of his peers essentially had gotten together and decided on their own for their own reasons that it was a, it was a good time to throttle back and he gave he gave good analogies about you know not firing all your bullets at once about not running your ovens too hot about you know controlling the quality of content about letting people digest information and the challenge is is that all the things he said are true all the things he said would be logical. If you were actually controlling flow control, you would care about those things because, and, and I do believe that he does care a lot about the quality of how disclosure comes out. But unfortunately, what it showed was that there is a flow control method in place. And this makes uh, me and I think a lot of us question all the way back to the beginning, has anything been organic? Has any news item come out on its own on its own time, or has everything been this orchestrated, you know, um, a symphony of of things? And 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 the truth is, even if it has been, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's any malicious intent. We always have to separate the action from the intent. But the problem is, we don't have any way of knowing what the intent is. So it could be malicious. It may not be malicious. We have no way of knowing. We're not privy to it, and we don't even know who has a vote. We don't even know who's making those decisions, who's influencing those decisions, what the end goal of those decisions are. So it, it brings up a lot of questions and a lot of challenges, and it's just it's a hard topic. Well, you know what? I'm going to disagree with you a little bit here in, in the regards that I think that they there is somebody above Elizondo who has shut things down. All right? This isn't Elizondo. This isn't the people around him. There are people above them that are giving them orders. Let's remember, Elizondo is still a government contractor, okay? And, and I'm saying this as a fan of his. But when you have the, the whole world watching every move, and look, I understand Elizondo is burnt out. Every day he was on one to two podcasts, sometimes three, all right? And his team, which includes Sean Cahill, who's been a guest on this show, uh, they were all burnt out. I know that for a fact. I was told that. All right. But that doesn't mean that you stop the flow of information. That's like when you get a band who has a one hit uh, or one album that just goes absolutely crazy. And then you don't see them go on tour. You know, they just, they just disappear. And, and that is not good for the narrative. And I think what more people need to be concerned about here, John, is the fact is this proves officially what myself and many others have been talking about since 2017 about the narrative that is going on with this subject. And when a narrative is out there, it is controlled. And we got to be aware of that because it's not about the information we have. It's about the information we don't have, John. 
Oh, and is it being released in a way that causes us to process it in a way that's different than how we naturally would have? It's very, very easy to to take a, a set of news events and reorder them to create a different emotional effect than you would have if they came out in their natural you know, kind of log of, of, of method. There's all sorts of ways that you can play with this if, if you're really into that kind of world. And I mean, and I have been in worlds where, you know, we've been doing big product releases and we haven't had a strict narrative, but we've gotten to a point where we're like, whoa, this is, this is getting a little out of control. Let's, 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 dial it back a little bit and let's get our deck straight, you know, sort of a thing. So I have been in situations where we have dialed it back a little bit because we felt like we were losing control and it wasn't part of a huge narrative. But I think in this case, I think what you said is very pertinent. It is it, this is a big deal with a lot of eyes on it. Now, my big question is, is that, you know, it is, is the, you know, is some of the influencing factors I guess what I'm getting to is that I think the influencing factors could be something as simple as it being how put off, right? Or um, or Senator Reid, or or even Kit Green. You know, there's a couple people, how put off in particular, who has been in this game for a long time, knows probably more. The only person that probably knows as much or more than put off is is Elizondo. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if if a lot of the direction was being provided by Hal. And so what I don't know is, it, is the direction being provided by someone, maybe not in their exact peer group, but someone in a, in a kind of an, a, an adjacent peer group? Or is there any involvement of, of, of White House staff? Could be. Could be. Either way, I do believe that the public who has big-time interest in UFOs needs to understand and learn very quickly that we aren't going to get the truth. All right. The information is going to keep trickling and seeping out. We're not going to get a flood because they are only telling us what they want us to hear. Let's move on here to number two. One a lot quick of people point. What, yeah. One quick point is that we also talked about this in great detail um, on Friday night's uh, round table. And I'll provide a link to that as well. If people want to listen to that. Perfect. A lot of people may not know who the name of Frank Bar uh, Frank Kendall, all right, but he is the Secretary of the United States Air Force, and he yes, had he a is. he had some very interesting summations about unidentified aerial phenomena. Take it away. Yeah. So so this was very interesting. This was um you know this was a was an, uh, a, a kind of a formal statement that was was made by him. And, uh, and, you know, keep in mind that in, in any military branch, there is a, there is a, um, a, a secretary of, of that branch and, and that's on the, that's more on the political side. And then there is a, a, a senior commander, um, you know, a, an admiral, a, a chief of naval operations, uh, something like that, that, that is on the other side that is actually really part of that military. So, so he's a little, he's a teeny bit detached usually has a background, but usually a little more on the, on the DC side. And, um, and basically what he said was, and he said it in, in such a way that um, it really sounds very logical. Uh, and he basically, I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said, look, there are a lot of things in the sky that are a known threat to us. And there's a lot of things being added to the sky that are a known threat to us that we are trying to, you know, didn't, didn't say desperately, but we're having to put a lot of resources into keeping an eye on and, and defending this country from. And right now, I have not seen a shred of evidence that any of this phenomenon is a, is a direct threat to the United States or to the Air Force. And basically, until I see that, until I, until I can see clear evidence or I'm given direction that it is a direct threat that we can do something about, there's absolutely no reason for me to spend a dime on it. But what was really interesting was he also said, but I know people are looking into it. I know it's, it's incredibly interesting. I mean, he, he, he completely, you know, threw the bone that look, I recognize this is going on. I'm not saying it's not going on. And I recognize it's pretty cool. It's actually quite interesting, but to us, it's just, it's not part of our job. Right. And it was a, it was, it was, it was quite a shutdown, 
but it was done in an incredibly pragmatic and and you know rather friendly way when you really get down to it. Okay, but for the U.S. Secretary of the United States Air Force to have him now talking about this subject and saying there is no threat phenomena, that goes right against the grain that we have heard Marco Rubio speaking of, Mark Warner speaking of, and people like Luis Elizondo and others, especially Christopher Mellon on, on media broadcasts. So are, are we seeing a division now in what this phenomena is, because we always knew there were factions. There was the group that didn't want this story out and the group that was pushing for it. Now well, are and, we seeing the threat versus non-threat factions? Well, and the thing is, is it is it does this now actually educate us better about where that divide is? I think a lot of people assumed this whole time that the pushback that we were hearing about from the Air Force was because they knew something. It was because they had some inside track or they were getting, you know, um, they were getting um, technology from it that they didn't want to let out. What if that wasn't the case at all? What if the whole reason why there's this divide is because they're saying you guys are lying, right? Like there is no threat, right? Like we recognize you, you think you have to lie to get money allocated. And if you want to go do that, you go right ahead, but we're not going to have any part of it, right? We, we have no interest in playing that game, right? And is that where the divide came, right? The other thing to consider is that the Space Force reports to the Air Force. The, Air, the Space Force is part of the Air Force in the same way that the Marine Corps is part of the Navy. And so what that means is, is that this guy may not have a, you know, he doesn't have a direct line, I believe, to the commander of the, of the Space Force, but through the commander of the, Na of, of the Air Force, he does. And what if, and I'm just throwing out a what if here, what if he delegated it? You know, I mean, let's face it, the Space Force just took a big part of their budget, got a bunch more, took a boatload of their staff away and assigned it to another unit. The Air Force was not a fan of the Space Force being created in the first place. They fought it. And now the Space Force has been created and I wouldn't be at all surprised. And I'm totally shooting at the moon here, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if, if the Air Force commanders just said, oh, look, the Space Force, good you deal with it <laughs> and just, you know, kick the, kick the can down the road. And we just don't know. All right. Moving on here. Cause we only got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Nick Madrid, who has been in our chat room before and uh, Nick's a good fan of the show. And uh, he's quite the, the researcher in UFOs as well. He's really starting to take this seriously. He has a new report out. What, what does it say? Well, I mean, essentially, you know, and I, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't mean to pick on Nick at all. I think it's a beautiful article. I think it's very, very well written. For me personally, and and I have a challenge here because of 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 how much research I do. For me personally, there wasn't anything in it that I would consider to be, um, you know, completely unheard of before. But what it is is it it's a beautiful piece that is a really nice balance of of detail and perspective with the the narrative case we've been seeing. And so if you read through it, you get a really good uh, point of view of of you know what might have been happening during these different stages. And the thing I do like is he goes in a little more about, you know, the possibility of um, you know, of other of other groups being involved in 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 decision making and other groups being involved in influence, whether it be clergy, whether it be, you know, other sort of groups and so forth. And so it's it's a it's a great article. I I I encourage everyone to read it. Um, but you know, in many ways, you know, I think those of us that are are um, you know, really deep in the woods here, um, start having a challenge finding, you know, any, any content where we're like, wow, like I've never seen that before. And, and it, whereas I think there's probably most people who read this, you know, will probably find two or three things that they hadn't heard of before. And so I think it's, you know, I, I encourage everyone to read it. I really enjoyed it, but I can't really pick out anything that I was like, you know, like, you know, quite shocked and, and, and thrown back by. It's going to be very interesting as we see this story develop. Where do you see it going from here? You know, I uh, I I really struggle at this point. Um, I don't, um, you know, um, I I I really I, I I really struggle because to me the the entire point of all of this of of all of this to the very end is 
a cultural exchange and a and if and a an economic exchange to me that's the whole point of contact the whole point of contact is i want to hear their music i want to taste their food i want to i want to do commerce with them and i think a, there's a lot of people involved that are focused on very short term goals and i don't know what they are are, are they are they military dominance are they a, a technology achievement are they um are they uh, an explorer achievement you know the ability to reach a certain star system or reach a certain place um you know i think there could be a lot of short term goals that that i i don't necessarily glue to because i'm more focused on a longer term goal and to be honest it makes me very nervous well let's uh, make sure you're not too nerved up because you got to get some sleep tonight Thank you, uh, Chad Smith or John Hudson for the unbiased UFO report. Always appreciate you, my friend. We'll talk to you in a couple nights' time. Thank you, sir. You have a good evening. Let's get to the news.